guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a user suggested tutorial on how to basically get what entity has killed another entity and basically create an event that's based on that. So we're going to be taking a look at that. An example that they provided is how to get a trigger event of basically when the entity such as a player um, attacks a zombie and it basically gets um, two seconds of strength after they basically kill, kills it. So we'll be taking a look at that script as well as another script that I have set up uh, very similar to the same method um, for a different entity though uh, of wolves and sheep. So we'll be taking a look at that today. Alright, so we'll start with the zombie one, and we're in game right now, and I'm just going to find a cave system that we can actually uh, go a little bit dark so the zombie doesn't um, get burnt and die. So we'll just spawn one of these guys in, and then we'll use our axe to kill it. And if we go to our inventory, as you can see, we have strength that we got from basically killing the zombie. So that's basically how that one's set up. And the other one that I want to show you is the, where did the wolves go? They went somewhere. One's over there. There's the other one. Okay, so if we put a sheep down here, he's going to get aggroed. And he's going to get the glowing effect because he's killed the sheep. So that's basically how that works. We'll go over to this one over here as well. And we'll just kind of get an idea of what it works, what works out like. So again, this one gets the glowing effect as well. So um, let's go into M Creator now, and then we'll take a quick look at uh, the script that is behind it. It's really only requires one procedure, and we'll just quickly look at that. So to actually get the procedure for when player kills a zombie, so we're going to want to create a new global procedure, and, or a new procedure, and then we're going to set a global uh, trigger called entity dies. Now this is somewhere around here in the list. Now it might vary depending on where new content and stuff gets added, but it's roughly called this one right here, entity dies. And then what you want to do is you want to basically test for two conditions. You want to test for the entity that is dying, which is going to be the event slash target entity. And then you also want to test for the source entity, which is the entity that does the killing. Now the any effects that you want to give the entity itself it would be under the source entity for the person that basically kills the zombie or whatever. So this would still be under source entity because that's the entity that basically did the killing. So in our case, what we've done is we basically tested if the zombie was the one that died, the player was the person that killed it, and we've given the player, uh, I believe, 10 seconds of strength for level one, and that will last for 10 seconds and then it will basically expire. So to build this, it's pretty straightforward. All you need is to go to flow control, grab an if statement, drop that on your main condition thing. And then what you need to do is go to logic, grab a operator, light blue operator here, and this will basically allow you to set it to an AND gate if you click on the equal sign. And then you want to just make sure that it's on uh, external input, so it's set up like that. And then what you need to do is go to logic again, and then scroll down to the part where it says is event slash target entity subtype of, and then we want to get our subtype. So the first one that we want to do is the entity that we're basically going to be killing. Now again that's for the event slash target. So in this case what I've done is I've targeted a zombie. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here and there should be uh, somewhere zombie right there. So we want that one 
And then we want to duplicate this and then we want to place that down here. We're going to get rid of the event slash target entity. We're going to go to Minecraft components, grab source entity and plop that down here. And then what we want to do is we want to grab the player itself. So this would be uh, the multiplayer one. Now there is a difference between these two. Player is on client side and MP is on server side. So it's most most of the time you'll actually need MP. It's rare that you'll need to use something only on client side. So most cases uh, server side will work for both client and um, server because most things are run on the server side if they're playing single player. So if we right click on that, then we can set it up for the player itself. And then in this box right here, you can basically set anything that you want for the event for the to take place. So for example, if you wanted to explode uh, something around the area, you could do that. You could go and explode and then you could do with power four and only the um, set it to none. And this should basically what it should do is just do the explosion itself and not the event or not the um, actual damage. So you could do that. You could do a whole bunch of other stuff. Like there's quite um, many things that you could do. You could give them more XP as well. You could actually go to player and then you could add XP and then give them five or just make sure that the event slash target entity is set to source entity because that will be the um, targeting the player that basically kills it, not the actual entity that's dying. So anything that's basically is added that says event slash target entity will be targeting the entity that's dying. So that's basically that. Now let's quickly just quickly take a look at the wolf sheep killed one. It's basically the exact same thing. We're just giving them a potion effect for the wolf and then what we're doing is we're just giving them the glowing effect for that. So that's all there is to it. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.